Great. Hi, my name is Justin West, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, some work you can do on Wikipedia. I will be joining you uh, at the Edit-a-thon, but this is just a little bit of groundwork so people know a little bit about what to expect and some things that are easy and some things that are a little less easy about Wikipedia. Uh, before we get started, I just want to showcase that I have a page that's got some links that I think will be helpful for you, as well as pictures of my slides. So if you want to look at a PDF of slides uh, going on at the same time as I am talking at librarian.net slash talks, T-A-L-K-S slash wiki edit, W-I-K-I-E-D-I-T. You can see my slides, some notes that I put on my Wikipedia user page, and a couple more links for stuff you might be interested in looking at. You might not be, and that's totally fine, but I just have some resources because, hey, librarian, and I thought you might be interested. So I'm gonna start with my slides. They go in a couple major chunks of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about Wikipedia in general, a little bit about just doing basic edits, and then talk about citations, which is sort of every librarian's thing, and a little bit, and maybe a demo, depending how we're doing, uh, adding uh, pictures to Wikipedia, which to be honest, is kind of my favorite thing to mess around with. So I'm gonna share my slides. And basically, this is what it is. We're gonna talk about Wikipedia in four steps. This picture is from Wikipedia. One of my favorite things about Wikipedia is that anything you find on Wikipedia or in Wikimedia Commons, which is kind of a, I don't know, sister property, the Wikipedia umbrella or the Wikimedia umbrella is gigantic. But this is from Wikimedia Commons, a big image repository. And everything you can find there is free to use, meaning you can use it for anything. You can use it for something that costs money. You can use it for something that doesn't cost money. And it is a way to kind of dress things up without having to worry about copyright. Though one of the things you'll find is a lot of thinking about Wikipedia stuff does involve a lot of copyright stuff. So first section is really groundwork. What are the things that it's helpful to know about Wikipedia? before you really start doing stuff with Wikipedia. Now, some of you, have, I mean, everybody's probably seen Wikipedia, but maybe not everybody has interacted with it. So I'm gonna tell you a couple things about it from my perspective. I've been editing Wikipedia for about 15 years and um, I'm not super deep into it, but I have uh, interacted with the organization in a lot of different ways from being on the, uh, foundation advisory board to working for one lib one ref to mostly just being a volunteer editor and i'd like to share some information that might be helpful and that might help you in the stuff that you want to do so starting from the general assertion that you're somebody who wants to or is curious about editing wikipedia the good news about interacting with wikipedia is you can fix things and you can help make wikipedia better. Obviously, Wikipedia is not without its problems. I would be the last person. I am not a Wikipedia apologist. But for everybody that comes and reads Wikipedia and says, I found a typo or I found something that didn't have a citation, those are things that can be fixed. And they will be found in not only Wikipedia, but all the different resources that use information from Wikipedia will have better information, which is great. There's also a huge audience. If you Google some random, not incredibly famous person, oftentimes if they don't have their own, you know, fan page or personal page, the Wikipedia page is what shows up at the top of Google, DuckDuckGo, Bing, Yahoo Search, whatever the thing is. So the stuff you put on Wikipedia is very findable. As a librarian, I find this very gratifying. Um, you don't have to be on a committee which is nice, or you can be if you like to, but you can really just kind of do your own work and peer review as such doesn't really exist, though there may be random nerds showing up to evaluate your work, but depending on how and where you decide to get involved with Wikipedia, you may find that you know the feedback loop is very small and in fact, very manageable. 
And the other thing is that the learning curve, meaning figuring out how to make a basic change, how to fix a typo, how to add a citation, how to add a link, isn't super steep. So people can get going if you're used to using a computer, if you're used to typing in a box, if you're used to using social media, if you're used to using anything that has a markup language, you know, doing something with HTML or doing something where you uh, use BB code and put little codes around stuff. Wikipedia should make a certain amount of sense. And my favorite thing is there's a bunch of librarians that use and interact with Wikipedia and they're very supportive and friendly and you can always ask them for more information and that includes myself. The less good news, just to not sort of pretend that everything is, you know, completely sunny, is Wikipedia poses itself as the encyclopedia anyone can edit, but realistically it is not the encyclopedia everyone does edit. The editors have a tendency to be young, they have a tendency to be male, they have a tendency to be white. Uh, they are often the people with the heaviest edit counts are people where Wikipedia is, is their hobby or potentially their job. And so they treat it a lot more in some ways like a workplace than just kind of a thing they're just going to do to, you know, just do a little thing, which is not everybody's effect. And so if you're trying to interact with people who are like this about your small thing that you're not even that invested in, you can sometimes find that you are going back and forth with someone who seems to have nothing but time to talk about your particular issue. And the other thing when I say talk, of course, what I mean is reading, typing, right? One of the downsides to Wikipedia in a general sense is there's policies, there's um, discussion of policies, there's back and forth about the discussion about policies, there's votes on policies and, you know, uh, annotations here, there and everywhere. And there's just a lot of reading. If you're a fast reader, you're going to have a better time because sometimes just like scanning a thing to get a sense of what's going on is what's necessary. And it can be hard if you don't read very fast, frankly. And as I said, if you're new, there are people who have really kind of hunkered down at Wikipedia and probably been there 15 years longer than you. I think I made my first edit in 2005. I like to think I'm a pretty friendly, easy to get along with person. Um, but I definitely know the policies and the rules better than somebody who may be new there. And sometimes people are friendly about pointing this out with, in disputes. Oh, I think what you meant to do was this or whatever. And sometimes people are poorly socialized or worse. And so sometimes they can be argumentative and kind of jerkish. In fact, most people who used to edit Wikipedia and don't anymore often talk more about the culture than they do about the actual work itself. And the work is just never ending, right? It's a big encyclopedia and there's just tons to do there. This is fun if you like little projects or maybe like me, you're stuck somewhere with like four or five months of winter in the middle of a pandemic and you kind of need a hobby that isn't all of your existing hobbies, cool. Otherwise, if you're somebody who wants to like get something done and be completely done with it, you can carve out little places, but there's always gonna be more to be done. And as I mentioned earlier, but want to kind of restate, you tell somebody you're working on Wikipedia, most of the time, if you're not getting a, huh, what's that um, kind of response, you may get people who want to tell you about their bad story about, like, about Wikipedia, which is a lot like when I was going to library school and after library school, I told people, hey, I'm going to be a librarian. And people were like, ah, my librarian when I was a kid was such a jerk. And I'm just kind of like, thanks for sharing. So you'll find that with Wikipedia too, doesn't have to be a thing, but it is just worth knowing in case that's surprising to you. And so the stuff that I do specifically on Wikipedia, I mentioned a program called One Lib One Ref, which is a um, twice a year project to just encourage librarians to add a single citation to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is in some ways known for having those little brackets with like citation needed after sentences, basically, uh, saying, you know, this is in Wikipedia, but we don't have a source for it. So eh, you should be careful about how much you pay attention to it. And one lib, one ref, their, you know, their general uh, slogan is if every librarian in the world contributed one citation to Wikipedia, it would never need 
for another citation, or at least up to that point. So I've worked with librarians uh, and library groups to try and encourage them to add citations. I love adding images from the public domain. Uh, I have some links to these on my page of links, but like um, the, the Schomburg Center at New York Public Library, the National Library of Medicine, um, the Florida, State of Florida Digital Library, all have images that are put online with a license that means they're able to be reused, which means you can put them on Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons in this case, and then anybody can use them for anything, which I find useful. Um, I approve articles for people who are new to Wikipedia. The articles they write go through the AFC process or articles for creation, which means you write a draft and then a more experienced Wikipedian has to approve that draft. And uh, this is really where a lot of people get off the Wikipedia bus because often the approval process is, uh, can be kind of, people can be kind of short and uh, curt with people who have clearly uh, put a lot of effort into writing new articles. And so I decided to become part of that so that I could maybe help that process be better for more people. And if you're somebody who's writing a draft for Wikipedia and you need somebody to approve it, call me and, or, text me, I'll never answer the phone. And I would be happy to help you with it. Um, women in Red is a project to get more women on Wikipedia, very worthwhile, very useful, very interesting, very supportive community. And they add hundreds of articles about women every month. It's really a cool project. Uh, I write articles about deceased librarians and people who play uh, organ in um, sports stadiums. Couldn't tell you exactly why I've been uh, during the pandemic watching the Red Sox organist play organ from his home uh, via Facebook Live and have been helping writing some organist articles. Um, I help new editors when they're having problems or uh, are confused about stuff. And also Wikipedia has a thank you feature. And one of the things I do when I just don't feel like doing much is I notice if people are doing stuff that's useful, fix a typo, add a picture, make that sentence better, make my sentence better, you can click a little button, send somebody a thank you. It just helps kind of make people feel worthwhile about the work they do. So that's my sort of, this is how I feel about this gigantic uh, organization, but let's talk a little bit about what you can do if you wanna get involved. So first things first, basic editing, right? Wikipedia is the encyclopedia, anybody can edit, but what does that really mean? So I'm going to talk to, uh, I'm going to mention a couple vocabulary words just so that you kind of, Wikipedia, you've heard me say over and over and over again, but there are certain things that make sense within a Wikipedia context, but are words that mean something else in another context. And I just wanted to bring them up before we get started. Um, first of all, Wiktionary, where this picture on my slides is from, that's a thing. It's a dictionary that anyone can edit. I don't spend a ton of time there, but I do like it's uh little logo and figured I'd put it in here. So GLAM is a sort of a subset of Wikipedians that are concerned and interested with galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. You'll find a lot of librarians and archivists and museologists and gallery workers um, being involved in these kinds of projects. And so if you see somebody saying like that they're a GLAM person, it's more likely that it is the Wikipedia sense of it nowadays than in the music and fashion sense of it, though, who knows? And I'm sure there are people who are both. Um, the word watch list, anytime you edit a page on Wikipedia or you uh, just decide that you wanna kind of pay attention to changes on Wikipedia, you can add them to a watch list, which is a special section of sort of your own user page where it'll show you the most recent edits that are made to whatever page you are looking at. Because the real thing about Wikipedia that I think isn't obvious from the front end is that every change that gets made to a Wikipedia page is tracked on the back end with a couple glaring, like if somebody does terrible vandalism or you know makes threats or does things that are completely against the rules, those are memory hold. But in general, every change that's made is tracked 
so that you can go back and see how an article's evolved over time and what users made what changes. And this can be helpful when you're trying to find like-minded people who did the stuff that you also would like to do, but it's also useful if you think someone's messing around with an article you worked on or care about, and then you could figure out who they are and figure out how to reach in, reach out to them. So your watch list is kind of the tool that most um, regular Wikipedia users use to kind of keep an eye on whatever the stuff is that they work on. The other part of Wikipedia that I think people are less aware of is what's called a talk page. Every article, and I think every page, but for, you know, a general sense for now, we'll just talk about every article, has not only the article, but a page for discussion about the article. You'll see the little tab behind the article tab. You can click on it and see people talking about stuff. This can include stuff like banners that'll talk about what wiki project the page maybe is a part of. It can also include people debating stuff like, oh, hey, uh, you're using this person's real name and they have a pseudonym. Let's talk about how to deal with that or let's talk about the policies or some discussions I've gotten involved with, in, which is like, this person uses they pronouns and you're continually using inappropriate pronouns, but there's a policy. I'm going to show you the policy and let's talk about it here so that the article can be clear of this kind of disagreement. Or maybe there's something in an article you can't find a citation for and you try and you're an information professional. You may decide to copy that sentence out, leave it on the talk page, and if somebody can find a citation later, good for them, right? So it's kind of a back channel for each individual page where people are having discussions. Often these are small and very contentious pages. They can be gigantic, long. Remember I said lots of reading, long pages talking about the topic. And despite the fact that many people have very strong opinions about lots of stuff on Wikipedia, Wikipedia does aim for what they call NPOV or a neutral point of view. Obviously, this can't always be attained. There are many, many arguments that you probably don't care about about what this means. But in a general sense, keeping the language kind of flat, you don't want it to sound like an advertisement for a thing or like a, you know, an, an obituary for the person where you're like, they were amazing. They may have been amazing. But what we want is citable facts about the thing aiming towards a neutral viewpoint. This isn't always possible, but in a lot of pretty basic articles, it's not too hard and it's worth striving for. The other thing people often uh, disagree about and talk about a lot is this idea of notability. Despite the fact that Wikipedia is gigantic and has millions and millions of pages, there is sort of a threshold of like, how well known do you have to be to have an article about you in Wikipedia? Uh, I got an article about me in Wikipedia. Megan's got an article about her in Wikipedia confession. I mostly wrote that. On the other hand, Megan hits notability levels for the kind of person she is and what she's known for. And there are pages and pages depending on what, um, you know, there's different notability for athletes than there is notability for musicians, than there is notability for activists, than there is notability for, educators. And so it's worth it if you want to be a person who writes articles to understand notability, but otherwise it's just a thing you should know because people talk about it a lot. When you're editing Wikipedia, and we're going to look at that next, you've got kind of two choices about how you want to interact with the actual text. There's what's called the source editor, which is like looking at the code that underlies the page, meaning, you know, if you're used to, if you know any, like, I talk about HTML sometimes, but it could also be like back in the word perfect days where there'd be little brackets before and after like text you wanted to make bold or italics. Same thing with HTML. The source editor lets you see all the code that tells you how a page is displayed. I like it because it lets me see what's going on. Most people, let's be honest, don't really like it because it's clunky and there's just lots of code in there. And then there's the visual editor which just lets you kind of look at the page and start typing in it. This is great because it's very easy to use. Sometimes it's confusing because you may not be sure 
what is happening or why it's happening the way it is. And there's actually kind of two separate paths of instruction, depending which one of these you're using. And it is worth understanding that there are two. So if you look at somebody's tutorial and you're like, mine doesn't look like that at all, understand you may be looking at somebody using a different editor. And then down at the bottom, just this kind of gobbledygook of WP colon stuff are often shorthands that experienced Wikipedia editors use uh, to talk about certain policies. So like WP colon not is a whole essay that talks about what Wikipedia is not, right? It's not a brochure for your business. It's not an obituary for a famous person. It's not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, WP colon COI is conflict of interest. Um, I have a Wikipedia article about myself, but I'm not supposed to edit it. I have a conflict of interest. Even though I am primary source material for information about myself, I'm really not supposed to edit that page. In fact, that's the thing that the talk page can be good for. I can leave a note on the talk page that's like, hey, I don't know, I won some major award. That should probably be on my Wikipedia page. And then somebody else could see that because maybe the talk page was on their watch list and then they could go in and make that edit. But if you have a conflict of interest, you're not supposed to write about the page that is exactly on your topic. Um, WPRS, not even sure I've remembered exactly what that is. And WP colon OR is original research. You're not supposed to be doing your original research and putting it on Wikipedia. You're just supposed to be citing usually secondary, primary, secondary, even tertiary source material, but you're not supposed to be collating primary material in order to create something on Wikipedia. So I feel like library people should be just at home because there are so many acronyms and other people use them and then other people are left kind of scratching their head. I'm gonna remember what RS means at some point in the future, but it's written down on that list that I showed you at the beginning. And let's actually talk about what your first edits are. Now, anybody can edit Wikipedia and you can edit Wikipedia without being logged in. However, if you're not logged in, you won't be able to kind of have a watch list and keep track of your edits. You won't be able to have a profile page on Wikipedia, which is maybe fine with you. Um, and you won't be able to, um, sort of have conversations with other people that are consistent because any work that you've done on Wikipedia, which will still get tracked, will just be linked to your IP address of wherever you happen to be using a computer and internet from. I often recommend that people get a Wikipedia account even if you're not gonna do much with it. You can choose a username that you think reflects who you are. Mine is Jessamine because that's my first name and I got in early. Um, and you can set up a user page so people can learn a little bit about you. You don't, this doesn't mean you have to be contactable by anybody. You don't have to give any real information that's public on Wikipedia, um, but having an account means you can group all of your edits in one place and I recommend it. And your user page, like I said, is yours. So it's like a little sandbox that you can just make edits on that while they are live on the internet, they're not on the sort of public part of Wikipedia. So like nobody would necessarily be able to find them except that they know who set up new accounts on Wikipedia because they just sort of go down a page that people would see. Also, there are a couple rules about having a username on Wikipedia, but it's mostly just like, don't use horrible, terrible swears. Don't pretend, don't make your username pretend like you're somebody who um, works for Wikipedia and don't make it look like it's a group of people because it really should be one person, one account. And you can add something to your user page using the editor, which is how I would recommend you do your first edits. If you look at the preferences section, which is kind of, you'll see the tab, which is kind of up on the right of the page once you've logged in, it'll tell you a couple of the things you can change. You can change your time zone, you can change your, um, you can change the, the, the way things look and feel. You can change the language it's in. You can change your pronouns. I mean, not change them, but you can just say what pronouns are your pronouns so that when Wikipedia communicates with you personally, it's appropriate in that way, which I actually kind of like, to be honest. And so the thing I often recommend for people is like, 
you know, click around a little bit, like find a category you find are interesting. Like you can spend a lot of time, you know, using DuckDuckGo or whatever to look up like interesting Wikipedia categories, interesting Wikipedia pages, 10 weirdest Wikipedia pages, but whatever the thing is, you know, poke around in whatever your area of interest is. And if you see a typo, feel like you can go in and fix that. Or maybe you're reading a page and you're like, Oh, this is about somebody who plays organ in a sports stadium, but it doesn't have the stadium organist category in the bottom. And you could just add that category. And I'll show you what this actually means next. But but feel deputized. One of the one of the sort of Wikipedia has many guidelines, rules, regulations, and sort of exhortations, but but one of them is be bold and try to make that change that you think needs to be made. And another one is don't bite the newcomers. So even if you make a mistake, the culture is supposed to be such that people are cool about it, not, not cool about it. So this is sort of a example of sort of what I'm talking about. This is the page for snack bar on Wikipedia in the view that I look at it in. You'll see up at the top where it says article. Oh, you know, I've never used Forget it. I, was like, I could draw on this page. Forget it. You can probably see what I'm seeing easier than if I was poking at something. So it's the article for snack bar. You'll notice right by the word article above the title of the page is a link that says talk. And that's the talk page. If you want to discuss what's going on on this page, you can click that tab and have that discussion. All of these links inside this article, hot dogs, hamburgers, french fries, potato chips, those all link to other Wikipedia articles on those topics. And if you wanted to make an edit to this page, you could just click on that edit link right next to the word read and you'll be dropped into an editor. And you'll also notice if you look right above that red circle, you can see my name, Jessamine, at the top. So you're seeing my view of Wikipedia to look a little bit different from yours. And so I use the um, text editor, the source editor, and you can see it's a little garbagey, right? Like it's a little full of code and a little hard to see what's actually happening. But I do want to show it to you because the edit bar that's across the top of the window here, you can kind of see how you can highlight text, click B, get bold. Highlight text, click I, get italics. If you click the little tab next to site, and we'll talk more about this later, it'll show you some uh, easy ways to enter in citations. So this is the source editor. If you are using the visual editor and you click edit, what happens is that same bar that gives you bold and italics and formatting just shows up at the top of the article. And you can just type right into the article as if this were a Google document that you were working on. And you can make your edits. And it is shocking how easy it is to change an article on Wikipedia that'll be seen by millions of people. And the reason I have this circle around a little pen on the right hand side of the screen is if you didn't want to be in the visual editor or you didn't want to be in the source editor, that pen is where you change back and forth to uh, where you change back and forth between those two editors. So after you've made an edit, the polite thing, oh, Megan has just alerted me that WPRS is reliable sources, which we'll talk about in the citation section. Thank you. I was very confused at why I had written it down and then forgotten about it. So the last thing when you make an edit is to leave what's called an edit summary. And all this has to be is just a tiny thing that says what you did. Doesn't have to be major, can just be a few words. But what that means is somebody who's going back and looking at the changes that are made to a Wikipedia page can understand not only who it was that did it, assuming you're logged in, 
but also what it was you did or what you thought you were doing. Because it's possible, again, if you made a mistake. So in the source editor, it looks like this picture on the left. Uh, you can just type in the box and then click the publish, publish changes box. And in the visual editor, it looks like the thing on the right, basically the same. The publish box is up and uh, on the right. And there is a big checkbox that says this is a minor edit. And a lot of times what that means is because people are looking at the changes that are happening to a page, if you just do something like, you know, remove an extra period or, you know, fix just a really straightforward, you're a hundred percent sure about it typo, you can check this is a minor edit. And then people who are looking at changes on pages won't necessarily see the minor edits and it can just make things a little clearer. Watch this page is checked by default. And what that means is every page you edit, unless you tell it not to, will be added to your personal watch list. And then if you want to, you can click on view history, which is another tab. So again, we're all looking at different tabs of the same page here. There's the article, there's the talk page. You can read it, you can edit it, but you can also view history and see the people who have edited this page. And hey, there's me and that's the edit that I made on the 17th of February, where I added a link to a Wikipedia page. So that's my name. That's the date of my edit. It's about how big my edit was, how much I changed it, and my little description of what I actually did. And if you know, you'll notice the person who's logged in underneath me, it's a little hard to see their username, but they have a username. But then underneath that person is somebody who just has their giant IP address instead don't really know who that person is. Uh, a lot of people who use Wikipedia a lot kind of, you know, sometimes are like, ah. you know, if you, you'd be more inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to a user who had signed in under their own username, not necessarily someone who had signed in under their IP address, but this can vary. So looking at citations specifically and those little brackets, citations needed, those are like the big thing. With Wikipedia, Wikipedia is a lot more um, serious about citations for articles about living people. Uh, this is partly because living people can read their own Wikipedia articles. And historically, sometimes living people can read their own Wikipedia articles that have gotten maybe vandalized a little bit. Uh, this just happened. Uh, there was a recent sort of not particularly well-loved radio personality who died. And uh, many people went to that person's Wikipedia page and just tore it apart, like wrote a whole bunch of lies and nonsense on it. And Wikipedia really tries because it understands how people feel about Wikipedia to make sure if people are adding stuff, it has sources and those sources are reliable very long articles you can read on Wikipedia about what a reliable source is. But from a library perspective, this should not be super tricky. You know, published sources, more reliable. Um, they don't necessarily have to be neutral sources themselves. All the sources, therefore, is to confirm that that's the thing, that's where this thing was said. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be you know, it could be like, blah, 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 Fox News says, and even though Fox News may or may not be accurate, you can at least say they said it, and then people can sort of understand and contextualize that themselves. So thinking about reliable citation, you know, news media, yes, somebody's personal blog, probably not, unless that personal blog was about some personal experience, and that's the fact you're pulling into the article. And if you add a citation into the document, it'll pre-build a set of references that appear at the end of the article. So you don't have to both put a citation in the article and as well drop it down into the sort of references section at the end. That's a thing that computers can do, which is nice. And I often tell people, you know, add as much information as you have, but if there's information you don't have, don't 
worry terribly about it. Like it's not a bibliography for a term paper. It's just doing the best you can for Wikipedia. And the biggest deal is whether somebody else can confirm the thing that you are saying if they had access to that item. And obviously so many of the things that people might be citing may be things that other people don't have access to. You know, they might be a, a journal that's only available through Elsevier and Elsevier just won't let anybody have it. It might be that it's a book that's on the shelf of your library, but it's not necessarily freely available online. That's less of a problem as long as someone with the source could confirm it. Obviously, more open sources are better for an open encyclopedia, but don't worry terribly much about that particular issue as long as somebody can track down what you're using. There are two tools I love to use on this topic. Uh, one of them is called Citation Hunt. And what Citation Hunt does is it um, allows you to type in a category on Wikipedia you might be interested in, and it'll feed you an article on that topic that doesn't have a citation and could use one. And then if you're somebody who's not the world's best formatter, and this is less an issue with the visual editor that'll do more of this with for you. But the source editor, as you've seen, it's just kind of messy. But this CITER tool or some search, which will work for biomedical stuff, if you're looking up biomedical stuff specifically, will allow you to basically plunk a URL into it for, you know, online media, a JSTOR article, a Google book, something from the Internet Archive lots of different places you might find information online, and then it'll format it in wiki style for you. And I'm actually gonna just show you what Citation Hunt looks like because, oh my gosh, I think it is very cool. All right, I think you should now be able to see my browser and I will, Bring up Citation Hunt, which is citationhunt.toolforge.org. It's, it's on that page. And essentially, it, it feeds you something that needs a Wikipedia like thing, uh, needs a citation immediately. But if that's not what you wanted, you can type in something you're interested in. I live in Vermont. I'm interested in Vermont. And you can pick, you can see how many categories and what they need. So like Bennington, Vermont, three articles that need citations. Baseball players from Vermont, four articles that need citation. Beauty pageant contestants from Vermont. Hey, there's only one, let's take a look. If I click on that, it'll basically come to Charlotte Ayana's page and saying uh, Charlotte Ayana appeared in a music video for Ricky Martin. You know, I bet I could probably figure that out. I'm not going to do this live and in front of you, but if I wanted to, I could just click, I got this, it'll take me to the page, and then I could find a citation and add it. So if you're not feeling creative or the pages you're looking at do not seem to have uh, what you need, there's definitely places and tools that you can use. And while we're here, I'll show you CITER, which we're back at our, uh, we're back at our snack bars here, right? So looking at snack bars in movie theaters and any other types of theaters, the snack bar is located in the lobby. Cool, right? Is it true? I'm not really sure. So I kind of set this up ahead of time like it was a cooking show. And I um, looked on DuckDuckGo for movie theaters and snack bars, et cetera. I found a link to the Encyclopedia of Junk Food which has this long essay talking about how movie theater owners were uh, crumbling. And so they actually decided to put popcorn machines in the lobby to get more people coming in and they liked the smells and blah, 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 et cetera. Long story short, this citation basically could go at the end of that sentence. I can copy this web address. I can paste it into CITER and click submit and it gives me a pre-formatted reference in the bottom window, which is nice. It's handy. 
you could also go to the snack bar um, page. I'll go to the visual editor and show you what this looks like. I think I have a screenshot of it, but I can just show you while I'm here. Click in the article, click in the citation. There's a, a similar uh, tool built in right here. You could just type in a web address. You could add something manually, whether it's from a website, news, book, or journal. And if you click book, for example, it'll just give you forms, last name, first name, the title's the only thing that's really mandatory, you know, year if you know it, ISBN if you know it, location if you know it, and click insert, and that'll put that automatically in the article there, which is uh, pretty great, actually. So I'm gonna go back to my, mm -hmm. back to my slides. So this is just, I wasn't 100% sure if my internet would be working. I think a live thing will explain it a little bit better, but here's a screenshot of Citation Hunt doing its thing. Here is the visual editor that we saw. And one of the things that I didn't show you on that other page, because it just wasn't ready for prime time, was this reuse option. And what reuse means is if you give your citation, whatever it is, a name, you know, you get something from the Wall Street Journal, you call it WSJ, or you have two things from the Wall Street Journal, and you call it WSJ one and two. Once you've given it a name, you can reuse that in, you know, let's say there's 10 sentences and five of them are all facts that you got from the Wall Street Journal. You can just reuse that one citation over and over and over again, the same way you would if you were writing a term paper and you can pick it from a list instead of having to retype it, which is actually really super nice and handy. And so basically the workflow for citations, fairly straightforward, find a source, and make sure it's reliable. This link here goes to the reliable sources page on Wikipedia, WP colon RS, you can look, look it up. Because um, these short codes, you can actually type them into the Wikipedia search field and it'll show up on Wikipedia. So you format using whatever the template is or one of the tools, this link will go to those tools. And then you can add it take a look at it and just make sure it looks okay. So the encyclopedia of junk food and fast food that I was talking about, when I typed it in, it showed me the format in this fashion. That looks all right. You'll notice it's powered by Zotero. That's pretty cool. And you can manually edit it if there's something wrong with it. And then just click insert. And that's essentially adding a citation. It's a lot of steps, but none of the steps are particularly challenging once you've located information about the fact in, in specific. And so this is a lot of what we do in um, one lib, one ref all the time. And it's, uh, it's, it's a thing that is nice to do in a group of people because everybody can kind of share their work and like, oh, I'm doing this or I'm doing that. Um, but it's also a thing that can be really satisfying for librarians because at the end of the day, you've helped make a resource better and you haven't had to like be on a committee or spend months and months uh, in meetings uh, to be able to do it, which I think is kind of great. So the last thing that I like to do a lot on Wikipedia and that you may or may not, depending on your institution, uh, really have something to offer is adding pictures, right? An article with a picture just looks better, is better. And if you share it on social media, the picture will actually show up or in Google or in DuckDuckGo, you know, the picture shows up with the article. It can be the definitive way to be like, this is what this person looked like. That snack bar article, that top snack bar was from um, the Florida Memory Project, the State Library of Florida's digital library. And they put a lot of their um, photography online with, um, uh, with uh, public domain licenses. And so I was able to be like, oh, it's a snack bar. I wonder if there's a snack bar article on Wikipedia. Oh, there is. Oh, there's a bunch of pictures. 
oh, this is a good picture. I can put this in the article. And now I've put an article that I thought was what snack bars looked like into the, an article on Wikipedia, which means more people will see it. And to be honest, kind of makes it more about that thing in a way. So this can actually be fun. And especially if you're working on biographies of people, um, finding a good picture that you have the rights to use can really make an article seem more articly, and that can be really useful. Here's a bunch of kind of wordy caveats. Um, Wikipedia is its own thing. Wikimedia Commons is really more where um, digital imagery, audio, video goes. Um, However, everything on Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons can be used in the entire world, which means that content there needs to have a free license, which means it's free for other people to use for any reason. So if you have a Creative Commons license that just says attribution, that's fine. But if you have a Creative Commons license that says no commercial attribution, that's not fine. You can't put those pictures there. Um, Wikipedia does allow using some imagery without free licenses, but you have to do a lot of fair use justification and it's complicated. So uh, this can be good for adding, like I do this with like logos of library associations, for example, or um, album cover art as another example. But in a general sense, it's a lot more fiddly. So free licenses or any picture you took yourself. Um, you know, there's some trademark considerations and like taking pictures of copyrighted works. But in the general sense, if you took a picture of a person and they've got an article on Wikipedia and you would like that picture of that person to be on Wikipedia and it's your picture, you can do that. So if there's pictures you've taken yourself, those are sometimes the easiest. So they can be added to Wikimedia Commons. Wikipedia, you'll need a fair use justification. And then there's certain things that you can use fair use justifications for, like logos, book covers, and et cetera, but you have to add a rationale. It's fiddly. If this is something you're dying to do, send me a message and we can talk more about it. But just for a basic understanding, I just wanted to sort of break down Wikimedia Commons, all the free stuff, Wikipedia, some fair use exemption stuff you can upload there. So things that I've uploaded include a lot of stuff uh, from the Schomburg Center that's public domain. Uh, National Library of Medicine has a lot of public domain photography. So does the Library of Congress. I've added a bunch of library association logos that are fair use eligible and newspaper front pages. I helped out a friend who was doing um, articles about uh, black newspapers, newspapers that are run by African Americans or for the African American community. And we got a lot of those front pages and they were usable on Wikipedia because of fair use. And so the workflow here is unless the thing is already on Flickr, because there's a Flickr to Wikipedia or Wikimedia Commons sort of portal, um, you'll have to be uploading an image from your own computer. And I'll show you an example of this at the end of this. Um, uploading the file will require you to pick a license um, as well as noting the source of the image, the author, and the date of the image. And there isn't authority control for the authors here and the sources, and that is a source of some pain for me, but it's just true, so we'll soldier on. And then more of the workflow includes, there's, there's a wizard that'll guide you through most of this, so don't feel you have to just kind of wander into the woods here but you'll, you'll need to, if you use the wizard, have to add at least one category to your image. So if you're adding an image of something that's already got an article about it, great. You know, you can look and see what categories there are for the article. Otherwise you can sort of type in the box and you'll get this kind of drop down menu, but it is like one of those tyranny of the leftmost things that it'll literally start pattern matching from the first letter you type. So if you're typing like Vermont comma Orange County, for, which is where I live, forget it. You just will not find it. If you start typing orange, you're not even gonna see Orange County, Vermont on the first page of results. So it's a little bit of a, little bit of a headache and you will need to pick one. So think about this ahead of time. But I could, if I weren't sure how to get to Orange County, Vermont, literally just use the category Vermont and go from there and then go back and add better metadata later. 
And so here's an image example that I'm gonna show you that I sort of found in advance. This is Kerry T. Grayson. He was a doctor and there is an article about him. So I'm just gonna da -da -da, share my other screen. And here's the picture that I found at the US National Library of Medicine. The picture is sometime before 1920. And if we look at uh, Carrie Grayson's Wikipedia article, it's probably definitely before 1920 because this guy is a younger man and this was actually what he looked like in 1920. So, and what else do we know about him? Well, um, the National Library of Medicine believes this item to be in the public domain. And that is the important part of this, uh, important part of this little project here. So if I go to the upload wizard, it's just going to Wikimedia Commons and you will need also a login at Wikimedia Commons. You can use the same username unless somebody's taken it. It is a little fiddly to jump back and forth between those. You can upload it to Wikipedia, but you'll get kind of a nag screen being like, why don't you put it on Wikimedia Commons? That way everybody can share it. So select media files to share. Find the picture of the guy. And I took the biggest version. I already downloaded it from the National Library of Medicine. It'll upload it. It'll let me know if the picture is already there. Like, so if it's a duplicate, it'll say, hey, there's already a picture of this guy here click continue. And then I have two options. This file's my own work, in which case I can just go, or it's not my own work, in which case I have to say where I got the picture, who's the author, and all we know is the guy's name was Hartsook, and they'll just take sort of whatever they can get. And then um, another reason not mentioned above, and here I have to really quick check the last one of these I uploaded just to remember what the license was. Dr. Gifford. Yeah, so there's a, um, again, looking up fiddly templates takes up a lot of my time. So bracket, curly bracket PD-US is the way to say, hey, this is public domain in the United States. There's also a bunch of Creative Commons options. There's also, hey, if it was published in the US before 1926, which we could probably also do, but I wasn't 100% sure. But this is the hardest sort of hurdle to get over. And if you click, I found it on the internet, then Wikipedia says, you probably can't do this. Hit next. It'll ask you for more information about the person. You can give the image a title. There's an abstract that doesn't have a lot of information, but we can sort of include that here. It will make you include a description. So sometimes I just copy in between them. Um, and a lot of times it'll ask for a date. And if you're like, I don't know the date, if you click the little edit pen here, you can just type this free form. You know, we know it's before 1920. And then category. I don't remember the categories. Uh, United States presidential advisors. That's probably one that I'll. Yeah, United States presidential advisors. So we can add a bunch of categories. I'm just going to add one for this example. But if that all looks good, we can publish the files. Takes a little bit of time. It'll ask you if you want to add more data, which is a. Uh, um, adding to Wikidata, not going to bother right now, skip this step. And then they give you basically how to use this file in a wiki text, which I can copy. Go to Mr. Grayson's I'm going to go to source editing just because that's my thing. And then I'll copy this. I'll probably change it back at some uh, later time. So I'll just leave it for now. I 
a younger image of him. So I did my edit summary. I clicked publish changes. For some reason, it's not working. Hold on. Oh. Minor edit, fixing my other edit. And look, there's a handsome picture of Mr. Uh, Kerry Travers Grayson, which is uh, pretty nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the other picture, but it can be as easy as that to make a substantive change on Wikipedia. And then whenever you do a social share or put on Facebook or whatever the heck, this guy, you'll get that picture and not the picture that was there before. So last slide. And thank you very much for your kind attention so far. That's the guy. We had his picture. The National Library of Medicine published it with a public domain license, and we could get it up to Wikimedia Commons and put it on his wiki page in, you know, just a couple minutes. It'll obviously take longer if you're getting to know how this stuff works. But man, if you're from an institution that has either public domain stuff or, um, I mean, I guess public domain stuff or stuff you're willing to put in the public domain for the purposes of Wikipedia, you can really, you know, change stuff and put a lot of nice stuff online. So last steps, I always tell people, if you want to get started, good steps are setting up an account, noodling around with your user page to just get used to typing into that kind of box. Try to make an edit on a page. Heck, you can go edit my Wikipedia page or some other page that is kind of low stakes as Wikipedia goes. Try to add a citation. Try to add an image. See if any of those things grab you or are interesting. And have fun at the edit-a-thon learning to make substantive useful changes on Wikipedia for people in your line of work. And if I can help, I can be reached on Twitter. My username on Wikipedia is Jessamine. And my email address is jessamine at gmail.com. And I'm serious, if you need help or understanding why a thing is the way it is, I'd really be happy to help you with it. So thanks.